the weather. It's unpredictable. Forecasters, using some of the most powerful and expensive supercomputers in the world, have a tough time just trying to tell us if it's going to rain next week. They're pretty good, but they don't always get it right. University researchers are developing a new way to improve the computer models that are so vital to good forecasting. But they're not using expensive supercomputers, just the humble laptop. The model's called the Weather Research and Forecast Model, and it's a high resolution, so it can simulate small-scale weather, like thunderstorms and clouds. Only recently have laptops been powerful enough to run this kind of model. Nowadays, they are resolved on supercomputers in much greater detail than can be done on a laptop. But the uh, opportunity here is that now you can actually run on, on a laptop a pretty decent simulation that captures the uh, key features of the thunderstorm. Dr. Chris Chambers tested his laptop out on a thunderstorm called Hector the Convector. Hector is a thunderstorm that forms over the Tiwi Islands near Darwin. And it is a very reliable uh, weather event. Almost on a daily basis, this thunderstorm will develop as the island heats up. So it becomes a very useful weather phenomenon to study uh, in science. One of the huge impediments to forecasting thunderstorms is the difficulty of initialising or starting the computer models with the correct data. The main data that people are using to start these models off is radar data, which is great. There's lots of things that you can do with radar data, but it's expensive to collect. Instead of just using radar data, why not use visual observations, which are very cheap and easy to collect. Dr Chambers tested the accuracy of his model against a time-lapse video produced by the Brisbane Storm Chasers. This video shows a comparison with the model simulation on the left and the time-lapse on the right. And it's looking towards the Tiwi Islands off Darwin. As we set the simulation running and the time-lapse running, the clouds can be seen to be moving in the easterly winds in the lower atmosphere. And then as the island heats up, the thunderstorm develops in the time-lapse. And then slightly delayed in the model, the same thing happens. If you pause at this point, you can see that the tops of the thunderstorms exhibit a similar structure, both in the time-lapse and in the model. So the model is capturing the main structures of the thunderstorm during this particular period. One of the issues with using visual observations for this type of sophisticated model is that it's pretty early days at this stage. There's a lot of technical issues to overcome before the potential of, of that type of observation could be fully realized in a thunderstorm forecast of this kind. If you have these time lapses and model comparisons going on, you can compare them uh, as they are unfolding to see whether the model is actually correctly uh, simulating what's going on in the atmosphere. And this could be done on a very large scale. You could have webcams uh, in many places, and model simulations running uh, on computers, laptops, anywhere. One of the changes that has occurred in the past few years is that now many different people are able to run these type of simulations. People who don't have access to a supercomputer. People who can start to experiment with these type of models on their own and hopefully start to come up with a wider range of scientific conclusions on these type of simulations. 